These are 10 things you didn't know about Formula One drivers. Bet you didn't know this. Fernando Alonso was born with a rare condition called Poland Syndrome. It's a real oddity, hitting only one in every 20,000 newborns. So what's the deal? Well, Poland Syndrome is a defect characterized by a malformation on one side of the body, usually the right side, resulting in the underdevelopment or absence of chest muscles on that side of the body. In Fernando's case, it means he's only got one jacked up pectoral muscle. But this hasn't slowed the Spaniard down. At 42, he still looks like a kid, tearing up the track and proving that with a competitive car, he can still fight for championships. Jumping from world champion to world champion, at number 9 we have Lewis Hamilton, a man of many talents and interests beyond the racetrack. The Brit often rocks the fashion game at every Grand Prix, strutting in wild outfits and gracing the covers of multiple fashion magazines. What not many know is that Hamilton has a deep passion for music, and the Brit even writes and produces songs at a professional level. Under the name Exenda, the Mercedes driver appeared as a guest artist on none other than Christina Aguilera's song Pipe. Besides, he's worked with Major Lazer, which is no small feat. In numerous streams, he shared snippets of some of the songs he's recorded and has also delighted fans with his guitar skills, throwing in some killer covers. Why the alias? Hamilton knows he's a big deal, and he wanted people to groove to his beat before realizing it's him. He admits that with races and a crazy schedule, he can't jam out as much as he'd like. But who knows, maybe when he hangs up the helmet, We'll see Lewis crafting a whole new track to stardom in the music scene. And speaking of a potential superstar journey, let's talk about Charles Leclerc in number 8. Il Predestinato, as they call him in Italy, carries the future of Ferrari on his shoulders, aiming to be their next world champ, no small feat, huh? Precisely, Leclerc's sports career hasn't been a walk in the park. While he was making waves in the lower categories, in 2015, he had to deal with the loss of his godfather and close buddy, Jules Bianchi, after a serious accident at the 2014 Japanese Grand Prix. Bianchi had been with him from the beginning, but his death didn't make him quit racing. Instead, he wanted to continue to carry on his legacy. Two years later, in 2017, Charles was fighting for the Formula 2 title when his dad passed away, which was a tough blow for him. Both Bianchi and his dad were big players in his life and career, and he probably wouldn't be where he is today without them. But here's a tidbit Charles shared. Just a few days before his dad passed, he told him they'd locked in a Formula 1 spot for him for the next season. Kind of a white lie, because at that moment, nothing was set in stone. But guess what? Shortly after, he sealed the deal with Sauber for 2018, and in 2019, he made the leap to Ferrari. So in the end, it wasn't really a fib. And number 7, there's this interesting couple. Usually, it's the F1 drivers who grab all the attention, while their partners keep it low-key with the public. But here's the twist with Alex Albon. His girlfriend knows a thing or two about being in the limelight too. Meet Lily Muni, a professional Chinese golfer. Lily's rocking it in the Ladies Professional Golf Association, LPGA, which is the largest and most well-known organization in women's professional golf, reserved only for the best players in the world. Think of it as the Formula One for the ladies on the green. And it's not just about golf for Lily, she's a social media queen, with 770,000 Instagram followers, serving as an icon for major brands like Nike and WeChat. Fashion game strong, career game stronger, she's the real deal. Alex and Lily have been dating since 2019, and not only are they seen together in the paddock, but also at all sorts of events where the cameras can't get enough of them. And since we're talking about particular relationships, in number 6, let's spill the tea on Alpine teammate Esteban Ocon and Pierre Gasly. These two, not exactly besties. In fact, they've been carrying around a mutual dislike for years, and everyone in the paddock and their fans knows it. You'd think that after a year on the same team, they'd be at least bros by now, right? Nope, not these guys. Gasly recently revealed that on a personal level, he still has no relationship with Esteban and he's cool with it. But why do these two get along so badly? 
What many don't know is that their beef goes way back. Their families were tight, and they first crossed paths at the ripe old age of seven. In fact, Gasly's love for racing began when he took a spin in Ocon's kart. They both grew up and competed together in karts, but as they both chased that racing dream, their friendship broke apart as competition and rivalry increased. The turning point? A little on-track collision during a weekend in Portugal back in 2010. Gasly swears Ocon missed a turn, went off the track and hit him. From that, they went from buddies to full-on rivals, and it looks like they're still not over it. Now shifting gears from a rough ride to a heartwarming tale at number 5, Lando Norris and his old man Adam. The young McLaren star wouldn't be tearing it up in F1 without the serious backing he got from his dad. Adam Norris, a millionaire who retired at 36 after selling his pension company, holds a fortune of 220 million euros. In 2018, Adam ranked 501 on the list of the richest people in the United Kingdom. After retiring, he went all in on backing his son's sports dreams, and boy, did it pay off. Now, Lando is a big shot with McLaren, so his dad can take a breather. In fact, he's not chilling, he's on to new things. After Lando's F1 debut, he kicked off Pure Electric, a company slinging electric scooters that aren't just city friendly, they're a hit in the paddock among the teams on the grid. Cool move, Dad! Now, switching lanes a bit, in the number four spot, bet you never thought about this, but in the current grid, every driver is right handed. Stats say about 10% of the world is left handed, so it's just the numbers game. With only 20 Formula 1 seats out there, the odds of a lefty making the cut are pretty slim. However, there have been lefty legends in the past. The most famous one is none other than Ayrton Senna, the triple world champ. And in other racing leagues, you got Sebastian Loeb and Valentino Rossi tearing it up in rally and motorcycle racing. So yeah, lefties might be a rare breed, but when they roll in, they're straight up bosses. At number 3, as it cannot be otherwise, we've got Daniel Ricciardo. This Aussie is all about the banter off the track, always rocking that infectious grin. No wonder he's a fan favourite across the whole grid. Ricciardo's not just a speedster, he's a tattoo fanatic. Inked up all over, he's lost count of the number of tats he's got. And get this, his love for tattoos goes beyond just personal style. After leaving Red Bull, the Aussie joined Renault in 2019, which hadn't scored a podium since they rolled back into F1 in 2016. But Ricardo, hyped about the fresh start, made a bet with his team boss, Cyril Abitabal. Bag a podium, and Cyril had to get a tat of Daniel's choosing. Crazy, right? Well, Cyril thought it'd be a sweet motivator. Fast forward to the 2020 Eiffel Grand Prix, and bam! Ricardo not only nailed that long-awaited podium, but bagged another one two races later. Tattoo talks went a bit quiet, but a year later, the deal went down. Cyril got inked with a honey badger, Ricardo's nickname, plus half of the Renault logo on his leg, fulfilling the Aussie's wishes at last. Next up on the top three, or number two, is Valtteri Bottas, who since joining Alfa Romeo seems to have undergone a revival, rocking the mullet look in the paddock. And when it comes to a rebirth, the Finn back in 2021 while still with Mercedes saved his local ice hockey team from going bust. Bottas acquired a 10% stake in the Latte Pelicans, a Finnish professional ice hockey team competing in Liga, the country's top division, in addition to providing investment. The Pelicans were going through a rough patch, and being the hardcore Finnish ice hockey fan he is, Bottas didn't think twice about throwing some support to his favourite team, becoming one of their biggest shareholders. Now, he's not only one of the most beloved drivers, but also an off-track hero for his local hockey team. Now, grabbing the top spot is none other than Max Verstappen, the reigning champ. The Dutchman likes to do things his way, and it seems to be working for him, as hardly anyone can match him. Among all his peculiarities, ex-driver and commentator David Coulthard revealed that the Dutchman told him he doesn't run his seatbelts particularly tight. Why? Because he likes to feel a bit more chill in the car. Sounds a bit counterproductive, right? With those crazy G-forces in F1, you'd think being snug is a no-brainer. But hey, Max is the speed demon here, 
So who are we to question his moves? Well, that was absolutely wild. Yet, if you think that's intense, imagine Michael Schumacher chasing a driver to the garage after a crash or a championship decided by a single point difference. And I bet you're hungry for more jaw-dropping moments, right? So just click here for the 20 wildest moments in Formula 1 history. Just go for it. 